This week from the Rochester Press Box, it's Salvador's Pizzeria from the historic Garage Door Restaurant. Hi, I'm Eric Ferris from the Rochester Red Rings, and I'm going to let you know a little bit about baseball's unwritten rules. And I'm John Dutilli. I'll tell you about the biggest non-story of the week. And I'm Mike Catalana. I'll tell you, you name your favorite player in NBA history, and I'll tell you why LeBron is better than all of them. Cool. I'm Bill Pucko. Make the case for baseball against lacrosse. You can't. Join us this week in the Rochester Press Box. The Rochester Press Box is brought to you by Salvatore's at the Garage Door. Rochester's choice winner for best pizzeria, featuring Wacky Wing Wednesday and the Super Slice. It's as big as your head. The games are always on at the Garage Door, home to the Rochester Press Box. Hello everyone and welcome to the Rochester Press Box here from Salvatore's Pizzeria at the historic Garage Door Restaurant. I'm Bill Pucko, joined as always John DeTulio, the HGK Sports Director. Billy, it's great to be with you. Mike Catalana, 13 Wham News. Good to be back. And it's our pleasure to have Eric Ferris, the Rochester Red Wings center fielder, on hand as our guest panelist this week. Uh, first thing, Eric, look, Memorial Day, you guys are in first place with a win over Syracuse. That's less than two weeks after losing eight straight. Hmm. How do you pull that off? Ah, big turnaround. Uh, you know, we came uh, back home after that eight-game losing streak. One of the toughest road trips I've been ever, ever been a part of. But, um, you know, we turned around, had a little talk with the manager, and um, just tried to play better baseball. And what did he say? He said, you know, put that behind you. I mean, I mean, it's a long season. It was early, and I think that uh, we didn't play up to our ability that whole road trip. So we came home, and we kind of tweaked some things, made some adjustments, kind of slowed the game down as a team, and, you know, we came out with a better record. Well, very impressive. Look, one of our favorite subjects here, we talk about this all the time, unwritten rules in baseball. Mike Catalano's favorite team, the Boston Red Sox, oh. were had lost oh. nine games in a row, and they got into a, a snit at third base uh, with Tampa Bay when a guy took a triple, took a stolen base at third with a five-run lead. Mm -hmm. Unwritten rules. Uh, is there a place for them, and do you like them? Um, I think that uh, just, I don't know if there's... You know, it's right for me to say there's a place for them or if I like them, it's just part of the game. I mean, in playing this game for my whole life, it's something that coming up, especially when you get to professional baseball, it's, it's something you just learn about and you know about and, you know, you kind of don't even really think about it. It just happens. And uh, I think that the best way to go about it is just follow them, really. It really makes baseball unique, doesn't it? Absolutely. But a five-run lead in the seventh inning in that game, I don't know if you saw what it was, yeah. a five-run lead in the seventh inning, are we pretending that the game is over? that they can't come back and then? And why not take third base if they're going to give it to you? I mean, they're, absolutely you're right. The <laughs> comeback is always, you know, possible. But, I mean, it's just one of those things, and it's up for interpretations. I mean, certain players, certain teams, you know, look at it a little differently. I mean, I think that if they're going to give it to me, I'd, I'd probably take it. Yeah. Yeah. But, I, I mean, it's <laughs> if the game's out of reach, which I think five runs isn't out of reach by, I mean, load the bases and hit a homer, you're right back in it. So yeah. A lot of it was, you know, stuff coming out of the dugout. Yeah. Cabrera's yeah. over there. He says, come on, bring it on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what happens. Isn't it ironic the Red Sox came back from five down the next night yeah. or two days to beat yep. the Braves? Right. I don't get it. I mean, I love <laughs> some of the – I love when I see millionaires fighting other millionaires. I don't know. I just it, – it, it gets me aroused, if that <laughs> lack of a better word. I just, Very but, nice. but whatever. You know what I'm talking about. The Red Sox and Rays hate each other. Right. I think they hate each other more than the Yankees and Reds. I think the Red Sox Rays has replaced the Yankees Red Sox in terms of players just not liking one another. And Boston was looking for an excuse to fight, and they got one handed to them by the Tampa Bay Rays. But five runs down or five runs up in the seventh inning, I'm swiping bases. Doesn't that show respect for the Red Sox that they know a five-run lead is not safe against Boston, although they've lost – what, 10 in a row at that uh, point? Joe Madden was quick to point out the year before in the playoff game, Red Sox up by six in the eighth inning yes. and took a base. Yeah. Is there an unwritten rule you'll go to war for that you really will defend? you think there's a place in the game? I mean, I think that I, I, don't, I don't want somebody on the other team showing up any of my teammates. I mean, flat out, whatever it is, whatever the situation is, whether you, you do something, any, anything that's going to embarrass my guy on, on my team, I'm willing to go to war for him. You know, one of, one of our favorites, this is one John and I argue about all the time. We oh, talked yeah. about it earlier. You know, Mike hits a home run, you're the next guy up, and you get hit. <laughs> you think that's okay? I mean, right. there, there, I, think that, I think there's a place for it. I mean, if, if my teammate, 
hits a home run and he, whatever he did, you thought showed you up, and I'm next in line. All right. I rest my case. Just, hey, yeah. I rest just, my case. Like I said, just stay away from my head. That's so it. So do you say anything to your teammate if it costs you a shot in the ribs? I mean, yeah, there's a, there's a conversation, I'm <laughs> yeah. sure. And if it happens often, then yeah. all right, now now we got to cool it. But, I mean, it's it's something that, that like you, like I said, you just know is going to happen, and it's part of the game. And I mean, no love lost. I think the, the point here is just don't bother the Red Sox and everything will yeah. be okay. At least on this show. <laughs> <laughs> Ever. The Biogenesis All-Stars when we return. Welcome back here at the Rochester Press Box. Salvatore's Pizzeria at the Historic Garage Door Restaurant. There are now four Arthur Creatures. Restaurants attached to the Salvatores. So we have the one in Aronicoit, Webster, Avon, and East Rochester. I invite you to go down to see them. Johnny, the Biogenesis All-Stars, uh, at least two of the Nelson Cruz and uh, Melky Cabrera would be slam dunk All-Stars. And we have a chance, yeah. as fans, to issue our own referendum on what we think about yeah, all this. Well, I mean, Do you vote for those guys? I would. I mean, listen, they paid their penance. They, they served their suspensions. I'm to believe now that they are clean. But who, I don't, I, Listen, they paid their penance. Uh, Cabrera was suspended. Cruz is, uh, was suspended, but he's having a great year. I would have no, I would have no problems voting for him. I would vote for Roger Clemens and Barry Bonds. I take each case separately. I look at Cruz and Cabrera, the years that they're having. Certainly, Cruz, who's on fire with Baltimore, he get my vote. Paid his penance, served his suspension. Why? Because he tested positive at one point now. Uh, that's a red flag. I can never vote for him ever again, at least for the All-Star game. Well, the interesting thing is that we all get our say in that. Because the fans vote, the players vote, the managers pick the... Everyone's going to get a say on whether these guys deserve it. Yeah, I Eric? Think, I think that he, he's, paid his, he's paid his price. I mean, I think that he, he did the crime and he paid for it, and now I think you got to go by the numbers. And he's having a great year. A lot of those guys are having a great year. And... Um, I think that now when it comes to the end of their careers and maybe Hall of Fame consideration, it's a whole other story. Uh -huh. But, uh, you know, as far as season by season, I think they're taking the same test that I take. So, I mean, when it's all said and done, he's putting up the numbers. I Why think not? that he should be voted in. Eric makes a good point about that because the Hall of Fame would look at your whole career. I don't, wouldn't like it within an individual season. Now, again, it would be tough to have a, a long suspension, but we've seen it in football where guys had a four-game suspension and then he still gets voted into the Pro Bowl or maybe to All-Pro or be up for an award. I think Sean Merriman that one year when yep. he was suspended. Yep. If those guys were suspended this year, would you think differently? And I might yes. think differently. You see, I don't want to see these guys voted in because to me they're keeping two clean players out. Mm -hmm. Why do you know those players are clean? Well, I don't know. I cannot honestly say every player in Major League Baseball is dirty, every Major League Baseball player is clean. I don't know. I just know that they're clean this year. They haven't tested. If Manny Ramirez can become a player coach with the Cubs, then <laughs> I can awesome. vote for Nelson Cruz. I, if, if a team that had Sammy Sosa in their organization pushed him aside to bring in Manny Ramirez because he's tight with yeah. the general manager and we're having problems with Nelson Cruz maybe going to the All-Star game in Minnesota, I don't got a problem with that. I really don't. Now, do you take this? Do you ever take this at all personally? Because to me, the victims of the whole thing were the minor leaguers who didn't get the shot. You know, no, you've absolutely. got 12 games in the bigs, so people that are, you know, doing illegal things with their bodies are, are holding you back. Well, I mean, you you can look at it that way, but I mean, when it's all said and done, I gotta play. When it, I've gotta play. I mean, and what I do, hopefully, is gonna is gonna be seen. And if I do what I'm supposed to do, then I get my chance. But I mean. Yeah, absolutely you don't want to be in a game where you're clean and the other people are dirty. I mean, it's, it's unfair. But, uh, I mean, the game is what it is, and I think that the testing now is, is incredible. And not to mention the Biogenesis guys, not to defend anybody or anything. They, they also never tested positive. It was just documents. So, I mean, you never really know, but, I mean... So there's, a, there's not an ounce of resentment dug somewhere deep inside you that these guys got away with this and you're playing in Rochester. I mean, I could, I could, I could only worry about myself. It's, it's, it's tough to you know, worry about these other guys. I mean, I don't know any of them. Uh, all I do is watch them play and like we said, I'm not in the circumstance now, they're clean. So I mean, gotta, gotta look at them like that. Cool. It should be noted too that you're playing very well, hitting about 300, playing mm -hmm. a great center field for the Red Bulls. Like it or not, when we return.
Welcome back to the Rochester Press Box here from Salvatore's Pizzeria at the historic Garage Door Restaurant. Wacky Wings Wednesday, live music every Friday, and John DeTulio will be starting up trivia come football season on Thursday. Like it's not, it or not easy trivia. I just want to make you ever hear a game. We don't we don't just give out questions. You got to earn it. These yeah. are tough questions. For example, <laughs> just say these are tough <laughs> questions. <laughs> All righty, hey. Eric. Yeah. Like it or not, the movie Bull Durham. How real was it? Uh, you know. That's that's a movie that if you're if you're a baseball player, especially minor baseball player, you you've seen numerous times, whether it be on bus rides. Yeah. It's just, it's I mean, it's it's pretty accurate, I'd say. I mean, I I believe that they used a bunch of minor league players to act and uh, to to film it, and uh, it's it's a life that uh you know you you gotta actually live to to understand. So I mean, I think that. As far as the movie's concerned, and after watching a lot of other sports films and baseball movies in particular, it's, they do a pretty good job. You know, to the extent that there's a comparison here, you put in 12 games over a course of a couple of seasons with the Milwaukee Brewers, mm -hmm. and there's that scene in the bus, and they talk about the major leagues. You ever find yourself uh, sort of nostalgicizing about those days? Uh, or is know, it too soon still? It, yeah, I mean, it's still, it's still um, you know, I'm still a player that still I feel like is is getting better and still working my way to to be able to have that kind of feeling. I mean, I'm still uh, I think just hitting. You know, I'm still I almost call myself hitting my prime right now. I think that I'm I played the game long enough now where I'm actually coming into myself and learning. You know, my game and learning. You know how to how to play. I mean, it's pro baseball is it takes a while to get used to unless you're an absolute freak. So I mean, I think that. Um, one day, I'm sure that, that that will happen. But right now, you know, I still like to look at myself as a uh, uh, rising star. Excellent. <laughs> Guys, best baseball movie? Ron, we, we talked to Ron Shelton yeah. for about 20 minutes on the phone or on our show. I, I, I think it ranks as the best baseball movie. I'm with him. I, I'm not a fan of The Natural. I love that's it, not, Mike. That's not my kind Mine. of movie. It's not my kind of movie. I'll take the man card. Memorial Day was great. Because wait a minute. I, wait a minute. I didn't say anything, Mike. I said I'll take the man card away. The Natural. The, natural, the natural doesn't natural. take your man card away. It's pretty close. Yeah. It's bordering. Yes. Boy, you draw a hard line. Yeah, that's what a you tough talk, line. Every man should watch The Natural. Yeah, I watched it. Well, where does Field of Dreams then? Field of Dreams is right in there. It's, well, the, big line. it's the big three. Field of Dreams. Listen, you didn't ball at the end of Field of Dreams. Then give up your man card. You're just afraid to admit it. Everyone cried at the end of that movie. And League of Their Own. Everybody right? had Niagara Falls. <laughs> League of the Own. League of Their Own. Forget oh, about it. Doesn't give you a free own. shot. John, like it or not, Serge Ibaka's performance Will for Oklahoma read. City. I thought he was out for the series. At least that's what we were led to believe. He's the difference maker uh, right now. He protects the rim. He's given him some quality minutes. He's blocking shots. You heard Popovich after the game, even halftime. Why we're even challenging this guy? I don't. I think we're crazy. Uh, for doing it, but listen, he protects the rim, he blocks shots, he can give them some points, he gives them an inside presence. There's no doubt about it. He, if the if the Thunder are going to win this series, it's because of him. Westbrook and Duran are phenomenal, but Ibaka's the difference maker. Was this injury overstated, or is this really yeah. a miracle comeback? Well, I think they did the whole, he's not going to be back. I mean, I saw Brooks say he's yeah. not playing, he's not playing, he's not playing. All of a sudden, it makes Brooks a better coach, right? <laughs> Yeah, I think I think uh, that injury really impacts them, just like John was saying. But I love the way he plays because he doesn't need the ball, and he is so effective for you. Playing hurt or playing injured, right? Yeah, I mean it's it's the playoffs. I mean if, if you could be out there, I guess you got to be. And that big body in the paint definitely makes a difference offensively and defensively. I mean it, it's. I mean I thought he was going to be out for the whole series, and all of a sudden it looked like you know the Thunder were on their way home, and now it's go any way. Had us all fooled. Uh, Mike, like it or not, uh, Donald Sterling strikes back. Well, here's what it is. Let's, let's establish nobody likes Donald Sterling. He's a jerk. He's yeah. half senile, whatever the deal is with him. But the typical thing that happened is in the beginning, the reaction was visceral about his comments. But people didn't look at it rationally or at least with an analytical eye to say, Donald Sterling ain't going to back away. He's fought in courts his whole life. They were trying to take his team away. At whatever point, when it's all said and done, he knows eventually he'll be out, but he's going to drag it through the mud. He's going to make it ugly. He's going to sure. do what he can for the money. And then you hear the legal people step in and say, yeah, I was listening today. A guy talking about which jurisdiction he's going to try to get to, how it's going to work for him. He's going to take advantage of a system because when it's done, he'll be out and he'll have his money, but he's not going to make it easy. But I love the fact that, listen, regardless if you love him or hate him, due process. 
That's all I'm going to He'll have his day in court. Right. Can, can you just take his business away? We're yeah. going to find out. Be politically correct or legally correct, we'll find yeah. that probably yeah. different things. Unfinished business when we return. We are back at the Best Sports Bar in Rochester. This is the Salvatore's Pizzeria, the garage door restaurant. We are the Rochester Press Box, unfinished business shop. The biggest overreaction and so-called non-story of the week is the story I'm going to talk about. Johnny Manziel in Las Vegas, woo, <laughs> hold the press. 21-year-old who seems to like girls was out in Las Vegas with a tight end. That's right, Rob Gronkowski, which no one cares. Gronk can party all he wants. The fact that Johnny Manziel was out in Vegas on his Instagram, sent out a photo of him and Gronk, a couple of guys, and 40 hot chicks. It sent everybody up in arms. Why isn't he studying that playbook? He's got to learn the playbook. Well, touche. Johnny Manziel then sent out an Instagram tweet of his, you know what, his playbook. You know what, for all the older guys out there, because I don't think the younger guys really care if Manziel's in Vegas, he actually studied and had fun. What's wrong with that? Can't Kudos to Johnny Manziel. I mean, leave the kid alone. He's 21 years old. Let him be 21. He didn't go to Cabo on a bye week leading up to the Giants' NFC Divisional Playoff game like Tony Romo did. He's in Vegas on Memorial Day, and I guarantee he had the best Memorial Day of any of us. <laughs> I guarantee That's okay you with that. you, right, Eric? I mean, come on. Leave the kid alone. Give him a chance. All right? God, they're killing him. It's what, May 26th? Right. Eric? I'm going to talk about the San Francisco 49ers, California boy. Um, Let's talk about the, about the team. I enjoyed their draft. I think they made some good moves. They're getting younger in the secondary. They picked up a couple big receivers, and Stevie Johnson from the Bills. Also, uh, Brandon Lloyd's back there for another run. And I think uh, if Kaepernick could get his, get his act together and you know become the quarterback that a lot of us think he can be, I think the 49ers will be once again in the NFC Championship for the fourth year in a row and emerge as the 2015 Super Bowl champions. So there's your football team. Uh, are you a Sacramento Kings fan, being from Sacramento? Uh, proudly, yes. <laughs> proudly, proudly, yes. And, and you knew where the roots were from. Absolutely. And there, you know, they're, they're, I think once this new stadium, the new arena comes in, you know, it's going to bring a lot of energy to the city. And, you know, I think that the new owner is, you know, take, take, putting in a good effort and trying to put together a better team. And we got the big boy. In the middle, DeMarcus Cousins. Now, if he could just grow up a little bit and, and act right, I think that they'll have a good team in the future. Cool. The Latter-day Rochester Royals. Right? <laughs> yep, exactly. All right, well, I'm going to talk a little NBA, too, and I'm going to talk about LeBron James. He's the best player in the world. He's the best small forward in the history of the game, and I'm so tired of people trying to take shots at LeBron. Look, I love Dr. J. LeBron's a much better player than him. Larry Bird, I'm glad everybody's fans of Bird through many years, is a much better player than him. If LeBron wanted to play point guard on the Showtime teams, he would have been better than Magic Johnson. Yes, he would have been better. He's better than Kevin McHale if he wanted to be a small forward. He is the most versatile NBA player we have ever seen. Is he Michael Jordan? No. I don't know if anybody could be Michael Jordan for exactly what he was. But it started to make me think, if Michael Jordan were around in the days of Twitter and social media, would we be attacking him too for all the different things like hanging out in a casino the week of a playoff game or maybe elevating some of his injuries or illnesses a little bit more or maybe losing all those games to the Pistons before he finally won it all. LeBron does everything, never, ever gets in trouble. The worst thing he's ever done off the court is make a celebration of his leave for Miami. The guy is the best small forward ever. I think he's right now the second best player ever and a couple more titles. He'll be number one. You wonder if it's just like if he's too good for his own good almost, and that's his biggest sin. He know? is an unselfish superstar. If he wanted to be selfish, he could score 35 a game. If he wanted to lead the league in rebounds, he could do it. We haven't seen that since Will Chamberlain. Will Chamberlain. Yep. Old Philadelphia Warrior. I'm a baseball fan. It's like a confessional here. Kind of proud of it. But if we were to tear everything down and start all over again, baseball is the one game we have that would never be reinvented. It's just too technical. Uh, take any other sport, uh, and it's, you'll find that it's kind of rooted in reality. The one I want to bring up is lacrosse. What athletically does lacrosse lack? I mean, it, it takes strength, it takes endurance, it takes speed, it takes toughness. 
you know, it's, it's a great sport. I spent this week watching some Section 5 lacrosse championship games, and they were absolutely magnificent. Make the case for baseball against lacrosse, and I'm a baseball fan, you can't. We record the Rochester Press Box here every Wednesday afternoon at 12.30 from Salvatore's Pizzeria at the Garage Door Restaurant. We invite you to come by, watch the show, say hello to the guys, have a little lunch. It's a great menu here. Thank you for joining us. John? Billy, good show today. Really Mike? good show. Thank you. And Eric, real pleasure having you in. I had a great time. Thanks. Good luck. Have a great rest of the season. Appreciate it. And thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week.